Recording in progress. good welcome welcome to another episode this is the barbershop sports talk podcast uh we're live on our youtube channel on our twitter handle at barbershop spor2 and on our facebook page and you can also follow us on our social media on the gram at barbershop sports talk podcast i'm trey frazier i got my brother maestro styles here with me today yes sir what up what up man how's how we feeling man cool man hey man if it looks like I'm tired, it's because I've been working, man. <laughs> hey, ain't we both working today, man? It's uh, it's crazy. It's, it's quick crazy. plug. Uh, on on the music tip, I just want to salute everybody who purchased uh this new project I did with Andrew Jackson, the Great Unknown. Uh, it's getting some good reception. Like a couple people supporting, man. I appreciate it. If you haven't got the Great Unknown. Follow me at Maestro Styles. The link is in the bio, The Great Unknown. I produced every track on there. Gave you a little hook on there. Hey, for sure, The Great Unknown. Go get that. Yeah, shout out to uh, Andrew Jackson. Shout out to you, bro, for uh, yes, sir. another dope project, man. Uh, yes, sir. Can, you know, look, look More to come. To, yeah, looking looking forward to the next one, bro. Looking forward to the next one. Hey, I got a, I got a question for you, man. Uh-huh. Um, best fight. Of the weekend, <laughs> to, Go, goes to who? Because we we we've, we've had a bunch of them. We've had a bunch I mean, of them. And I it's... mean, easily <laughs> the river, the the, the joint in Alabama. Yes, sir. Yeah, easily. Yes, sir. Easily, easily. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Why I didn't think about that? I got four of them bitches on my damn back <laughs> counter, man. Why I didn't think about that shit? Hey, shout out to all the black people in Montgomery, Alabama. That showed out for this brother. This brother's working security, trying to get these white folks to, you know, move their boat off the dock so this riverboat could come through, let some people off. And it got crazy, man. Um, yeah. White the white folks they jumped him. Homie swam from the boat to the dock to help. Dude from the ramp up top went down to help. And then next thing you know, by the time the boat got to the dock, um. You, you just saw niggas, like, you just saw niggas run into the smoke, and yeah, that was it. <laughs> for sure, and and let, and let me be clear, man, I hate that it had to come to that. Um, You know, keep your damn hands to yourself, mm -hmm. but I'm proud of my people who saw who saw a, a, a situation getting out of hand for no reason. Yes, sir. And um, I, I, I saw somewhere that the night the day before that was a trump rally there and oh i didn't know that hours, yeah and then like two hours before right was some like uh two hours before that situation was like uh this lady doing some type of a um uh uh some type of a uh what am i what's the word i'm trying to, some type of a uh memorial like a memorial for some dead for some for some uh people who had passed away yeah um yeah so it was I, I, I was thinking like, man, that is got that's like 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 some type of a hotbed for racism over at that at that one particular area mm -hmm. for it to be something for white people in a Trump rally and the the day before and then right before that situation happened, uh, some type of a, a, a ceremony for for black people, man. So yeah, um, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Down so there, I man. mean, like I I, I wish that. It didn't get crazy like that. I wish them dudes didn't do, didn't go crazy like that. But, but if you're going to put that energy out there, then you, you, you damn sure need to get it reciprocated. Two things. Keep your hands to yourself, number one. And number two, just move the damn boat. Like, I mean, you know. And I hate that that lady had to get hit with a chair. Because let's be clear, that was a woman who got hit with a chair. It was a woman. Um, it was a woman that got yeah, hit with a and chair. I hate that, and I hate that that had to happen to you. But what are you doing? 
yeah. Get out, yeah. Like, what, what, you but know. you know, I think we, I think we talked about this, um, you know, a few times when we're discussing um, when guys fight and the female kind of is involved, and when the female inserts herself into the situation to get yeah. physical. Once you do that, then you, you open you yourself. Fire. You open yourself to getting got like she how she got got. Yeah, for you sure, know? for sure, for um, sure. So yeah, and by the, let me be clear. That's not because I'm not saying that because she didn't quote unquote deserve it. Um, because I because I agree with you. I agree, and we've been saying it forever. If you if you get in that, then you bound to get what's coming to you. Yeah, I just I mean, but I'm always going. I I I just hate that. You know, I hate that it had to be her. When I when I saw it the first time, when I first saw it in real time, I did I did kind of jump up. and was like whoa. And then when the um and the girl and shout out the girl that was talking throughout the whole thing because she was doing like some great play by play on the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the dudes I guess was standing next to her and was like, "Yo, oh he going to jail? He going to jail? Whatever." And I I, I kind of had to agree because yeah, sure. that, that that was I mean it, it, it I'm was not gonna assault. say excessive. Yeah. But I'm not. I mean all of the shit was assault. But yeah, 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 I mean, absolutely. I'm, I'm not absolutely. gonna say I'm not gonna say that it's excessive because I don't believe that. But certainly somebody looking at it would say, okay, we need to get him because he's going to the next level. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like like yeah. I was just gonna say, it just it just hit different. No pun intended. It 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 hit different than. You know, guys just getting punched in their face, right? Like you getting right. you getting hit on the head with a folding chair, like, yeah. and you're not even in a position where you could really, you know, defend yourself. She was sitting down, like she she got knocked to the ground, and then homie came over and and hit her over the head with the chair. Yeah. But, at, but but at, but at the same time, she was being a she was she being was aggressive. in there. Yeah, she was she in the fray, and, and she got sat down. But I bet she ain't fight. She wasn't fighting no more after she she caught that. She chair. was in there. She she was so, definitely yeah, you got in eliminate there. Her. You Absolutely. Got eliminate her. Although I will say there were quite a few other white guys that were in that scuffle that deserved the chair. <laughs> Certainly, well, also. I, 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 well, look. look. <laughs> I think he saw somebody who could get it. He saw, get it yeah. He, he, he was resistance. he was clearly enraged. He clearly yeah. was like in a zone where it was just like, yo, like they trying to get us. They trying, no, they trying to kill us. So yeah. I, I I gotta kill back. And yeah. he, he saw the nearest object. Then I he think this went after is important. it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, a, a, a big shout out too. So. I know there's some leaders down there that were speaking on behalf of the black folk that did get arrested that was in the fight. They ended up releasing those folks. Um, so, you know, shout out to whoever the higher ups are for kind of understanding the situation for kind of what it was, how it started. This was melee. Stuff. This is not isolated incidents. This was right. something, yeah. This was right. something with, and, and by the way, um, you know, and I know people take criticism for um, videotaping, but I think for this particular situation, I think it was great that you had multiple camera shots of this whole incident, like even kind of going back to, how it started, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we saw, and I don't know if you saw either, but we saw the security guard tell the guys, hey, I need you to move the boat from the dock because we're trying to get the riverboat through. And then when he saw they wasn't complying, he went and I guess he was trying to de-anchor the boat from the um, dock. And then that's when, okay. you know, they kind of had a problem with it. And then they were kind of right. going back and forth, you know, on a verbal tip. And then next thing you know, White dude comes from the left and just starts swinging at him. So yeah. we we know who started it. Like it, it's as right. clear as day. Right. And so, right. um, so yeah. Props to the folks that you know took video of it, and, and and more importantly, props to the people that went to that man's rescue. You know, for sure, for for certain there, man. For sure. Um, but y'all need to stop acting like that, white folks. <laughs> hey, 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 yeah, like no bullshit. I need to stop acting like that because I don't, I don't, I don't, and obviously that wasn't there, so I don't know what happened. But uh, move your damn boat. He'd have been wrong if he called the police, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, right. He tried to, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. You you doing you doing too much? Y'all was doing boat. too much. Move the boat, and 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 more importantly, keep your hands to yourself. Like, For sure. You, you didn't have to strike the dude like that. So. For sure. Um. So I guess since we're talking about uh fights and stuff, so did you see uh? 
Tim Anderson from the White Sox gets slumped by yeah. uh, Jose Ramirez. He got slumped by by a sleeper joint. That dude that slim that slim swung and didn't know it was going to connect. Yeah. Um. Look, and, and then got more games than then got more games. Yeah. Than, uh, yeah. Than Short. This uh, Ramirez. Ramirez is it Ramirez? Jose Ramirez? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's wild. Yeah. Three games for Ramirez and I think six for. I mean, Anderson. it seems. I, I mean, I, I I don't pretend to have seen the whole you know situation from start to end. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but it would seem that Tim Anderson was the aggressor. He just got caught being uh, aggressive. I I don't I, I don't, don't know, know man. I don't you know, know I don't know because I, I watched the whole thing. I mean, Anderson was sliding in the second base. He kind of no uh, Ramirez. I'm sorry, Ramirez mm-hmm. was sliding into second base. Um, he kind of slid under Anderson's legs because I guess Anderson was trying to um, tag him before he hit tag second. Right. And Anderson got up, Ramirez got up, and you saw some verbal stuff for like, you know, a quick couple seconds. And then next thing you know, the ump gets in the middle, um, shoves the ump out the way. They Who both, shoves the ump out the way? I think it was Ramirez that kind of shoved the ump out the way. Okay. And then that's when Anderson threw the glove off and was like, yo, we gonna have to square up. <laughs> so it's kind of it, like the three games to six. Like you basically you're giving him double over. Like I, I feel like it should be equal. Okay, I, 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 that's I, fair. Based I, on how you described it, that's fair. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of feel like it's equal because they both squared up. It's not like Ramirez hit him off the break or anything like well, that. Well, my thought was based on how you described it was mm-hmm. uh, Ramirez pushed the umpire. Okay, so yeah, that's aggressive, mm-hmm. and then yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Anderson throws off his glove like I, you know, try and shoot the fade. Yep. So then, so then that's aggressive. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think it should have been equal. I agree. I mean, yes. Uh, too if bad. I'm Tim Anderson, I would appeal the six games and get it reduced. If I'm Tim Anderson. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess. I mean, I, I mean, I guess six games. I, at this at this stage of the season, six games is kind of important right now. Start or start, at least starting to be. Yeah, um, White Sox suck. They're not going anywhere. Oh, uh, I, well, I mean, <laughs> but it's still money. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still of course, money. of course. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. It's 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 funny. Uh, so, did you watch the um, you watch that pivot episode with Tim Anderson on there? No. No, okay. I didn't know who Tim Anderson was before this, so... Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I would, um... And, and I'm not gonna pretend like I watched the whole, um, episode of it, but I, I would suggest... Because seeing, the, you know, a couple of clips from it, because he's the, he's the guy that I guess, um... Is, is got, like, the, the, the girlfriend on the side or something, you know, crazy like that. I don't want to go, you know, too deeper into it without really getting all the, the facts straight. But it's just funny how this incident comes up and then people saying, oh. So he kind of like a, a popular, so he's a popular player at baseball. Yeah, he, he's, he's okay. popular. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't really watch baseball like that. So. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I got you. I, I got you. But, um, but seeing the clips from that episode, I said, Yo, I need to watch this from you know beginning to end because a lot of folks are making references to oh he got karma, um, you know just off of being hit because of you know the I guess the history with him and you know some side chick or whatever because he's married to some girl right now so you know uh, I'm, I'm gonna find out what that's all about. Um, so I guess the other uh, melee uh, <laughs> if if you want to call it that which really. It really wasn't a it wasn't a popular fight, but um so I guess there's this YouTuber called uh Kai Sinat, a very popular uh YouTube personality. Okay, I've seen his name, but I ain't You said what? I seen I saw his name on timelines, but Gotcha. I, uh... Gotcha, gotcha. So uh so this guy had uh made an announcement to his fans that he was gonna be in Union Square, New York City giving out free PS5s or whatever. And so I guess he and his crew, they get out there. There's mad people out there on the square. And I mean, I mean, it's to the point where cops got to block streets off. Cars couldn't go nowhere. And then next thing you know, um, cats just start looting. Like, you know, a couple fights broke out. I mean, nothing popular or anything like that. I mean, who that, is this nigga? Like, this, who is this nigga? Why, I, who is I, this I'll nigga? be honest with you. When I when I heard the story, I didn't know who this cat was. And at that point, I just didn't kind of bother to research him, like, what God his background him. is, 
where he came from or whatever, but the dude was don't this like a rap or some shit. I thought I saw that he rapped. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, bro. I don't know, God but he, but he, you know, he. Hey, God bless him for being able to, you know, attract the crowd of that size for being a popular, you know, YouTube cat. Like again, oh, I don't cute. know. I don't know who the cat is. Like I just learned oh, like about I said, him. Yeah, I, I, I was more so saying I don't give a fuck. Yeah. God bless him. God yeah. bless him. Though. Right. Right. But we got more pressing issues, Trey. And I don't know how long before we got more pressing issues. Yeah, we definitely do. We we we. Who, <laughs> who the fuck let Kyle and Kyle Herd get that shit off today? Uh, that's crazy. I saw your tweet earlier, man. Um, and this this ain't the only thing I got smoked for today. But yeah. Um. Who the fuck is Kyle? I, I, look. So can I, I can I put some blame to some folks too? Because I I, I think. I think we got two stories that center around graphics production people. We'll we'll talk about the Orioles stuff in a second here. Okay. But this but this Colin Cowherd stuff, right? So obviously he's doing radio, but he's also simulcast on TV, right? So um they put this graphic up where he's got a list of quarterbacks that he's claiming you can't win a Super Bowl with, right? Yeah. And so He's got Dwayne Haskins' name on there. Now, everybody knows, you know, rest in peace to rest in peace. Dwayne Haskins. Um, Dwayne Haskins passed away last about a year ago, last year. Mm. And to me, it's number one, it's very disrespectful for number one to even bring up his name in that type of a conversation, knowing that he's not around to defend himself, for one. Um, number two, you got a graphics department or production department that is supposed to be on point with these things before you even broadcast it to your audience and then to the person, in this case, it's Colin Cowherd. You know, I don't know if he got caught off guard with, you know, with the name being there. I would think no, you would... No, I, no, I'm sorry, Trey. And I, what? Like, what what happened? What's, what's good? Colin man? Cowherd is... And a, for the record, I didn't... And for the record, I didn't see the clip. I didn't... I, I saw the I, I saw, saw what I need to I saw what I need to saw. I didn't I, I didn't I, I didn't hear see. the audio. I didn't hear the audio. I just yeah, saw I, I saw the list. He said Dwayne Haskins. Let me I'm I'm sorry cuz he said Dwayne Haskins by name. Of all the names he could have said like okay, if the graphic it made a mistake, cool. Mm -hmm. The names the, the name he picked off of that list to read was Dwayne somebody else and Dwayne So he didn't Haskins. list so he didn't go quarterback by quarterback. He went no. right to Haskins then, and pointed out and called out Haskins. Haskins, Haskins and whoever and, and, and another name I don't remember. But but here so I want to say that a sports broadcaster of his ilk, meaning he's done it for this however many years, yeah. millions of years. Yeah. Um, he did. Maybe he forgot that Dwayne Haskins passed. But in my mind, no. Cause you were, you were I can't buy that. Know. I can't no, buy that. Exactly. No. Yeah, I can't no. buy that. Yeah. So even worse, right? Mm -hmm. Did you see the list? So I should don't worry. I can't. I got yeah, the list. I, I, don't I can't. Worry. I can't remember. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> when I tell you that the majority of the people on this list are even out of the league or or third string quarterbacks, mm -hmm. is the most. Is some of this? This nigga got. EJ Manuel on this list. Oh snap! This nigga got Johnny Manziel on this list. This nigga wow. got uh, 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 Blake Bortles on this list. Teddy Bridgewater. I guess Sam Donalds is still in this league, but he's a third string quarterback. Yeah, Bridgewater's still in the league. He's I, just... like, I get, I... It's a mixture of right, names. Right. Say, yeah, uh, it's a mixture of names. No, right. Yeah. So who like nigga? What like was this shit on? Was this shit on quarterback day? Like. What was this? Why would you mention EJ Manuel and Johnny Manziel and Marcus Mariota? I get Marcus Mariota is still in the league. Yeah. He is not a starter. Blake Bortles is not a starter. Um, he got Justin Fields on here. He got Daniel Jones. He got Kenny Pickett. Like he got some quarterbacks. Okay, there. Right, so I he's got current that. quarterbacks on there. Sure. Okay. But most of them are either not current. Mm-hmm. They got in the league. Or they oh, there's, oh, there's second. You know, not starting, not even starting. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck is this nigga? 
Who the fuck is this nigga? And who the fuck is these uh these these people? This is FS1. Fire, this the, is gra- fire the graphics people. And and Colin Cowherd and fire, his ass fire, fire fire his ass. Right, we ESPN firing niggas for absolutely nothing. Why you yeah. deserve a job? Yeah, 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 to, yeah. To drop the ball like that. Yeah. And not even even and even and either not even notice it. Mhm. Or notice it, which makes me to believe that you got some type of ill will towards Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. And if that's the case, fuck you. If and 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 if that happened the way you're saying it, then yeah, that's 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 foul. That's yeah. foul. That's foul I, on I, all parts. No, nah, that's na- that's nasty, 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 nasty behavior. That's that's he foul. He should I, I, and 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 the positive, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to be a more sentient human being, wants to just believe that he was really that oblivious in the moment and didn't realize what he had said. And realize what they had did, and that by tomorrow there's going to be a wholehearted and um, uh, apology that is heartfelt, and that makes me believe that he was really caught in the fucking moment, or that something happened behind the scenes that we don't know about. Otherwise, I like, and it's not like I super supported Kyle, Colin Cowherd anyway. Yeah. But I'm definitely off that bitch ass nigga. If that's what, if that's how he going right now. This is this was planned. Like the the way this kind of. Looks, you know, just the context that I don't you know. put out. I don't work for FS1, so I don't know. This, 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 this look planned, this bro. Ma- it this, do. It, it looked planned. Like I was, like I was about to shoot Colin Coward some bail because I thought he got, you know, again, I didn't watch the audio. I just saw the the video, the like the intro or the video, um, plus the names. I didn't, I didn't hear the actual audio, and I didn't hear him list the quarterbacks. And then get the Dwayne Haskins. I didn't see any of that. This but, nigga said Dwayne Haskins by name. But that, that's when when that's naming foul, some man. notables. When naming notables off of that list, he could he thought that Dwayne Haskins was a notable name to mention. That's foul, man. That that that's just foul. That's that's some that's, that's crazy. Up. That's that, crazy. That, that, to that's me, that's, that's messed that's up. That's crazy to me, dog. <laughs> that's crazy to me. That is like that. I no, that's crazy to me. Yeah, that that's messed up. Yeah, fire fire the graphics people. Fire the fire fire. Folks. Yeah, some some folk need to get fired. You know, it's it's one thing because you, you you hear instances where graphics people accidentally put stuff in there, or maybe they do it a little bit on purpose just to be slick or whatever. And then the on air personality kind of gets caught off guard, and sometimes they got to pivot just to make sure they it wasn't reading stuff. But what's up? What this nigga think is Anchorman? Where you you read whatever is on the fucking teleprompter, dog? Like, what is this? Uh, like, this, what kind of elementary bullshit? Is, like, this is elementary. At, at, at its at its. But you, but you realize that's that's like today's like media. Like when 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 graphics are shown on a screen, and whether you're like a play by play guy or you're a personality, you're saying stuff to kind of you know reference what the graphic is saying. Maybe not. Word for word, sometimes, but that's sure. what sure. today's kind of culture is. Sure, but I'm sorry, I just deleted the fucking graphic. But let me, let me. I, but the, but my my thing is, is bro, uh, not half them names were not even names that should have been mentioned at all. I'm I'm, I'm with you 100. percent and, so, I'm, and so, I'm also with you that I I feel like I feel like this was planned. Like I feel like they can't well, come they out. Should, I hope and, they good. I hope they got a good laugh over that joke because they should lose their fucking jobs. Because I'm sorry, don't Paxton Lynch play in the XFL? Paxton Lynch does play in the XFL. Like, what are we doing right now? <laughs> like, what are we doing right now? What are we doing right now, bro? Is, like, yeah, no, they no, it, it's nasty. It's nasty work. It's nasty fucking work. Yeah. And I hope they got a good laugh because they because they should pay for it with their fucking jobs. Wild stuff. It's Wild nasty, stuff. dog. I don't, I don't, I don't co-sign it. I don't. Nah, that's that's bullshit. Wild that's stuff. bullshit. Wild stuff. Fire, fire them graphics people and Colin Cowboy. He got to get dealt with. De- deal with that guy. I mean, look, like, look, dog. Hey, ESPN is making it very clear that we can replace people, big mm-hmm, names, mm-hmm. And, and 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 be all right. Yeah. Fire them. That's probably what's going to end up happening fire anyway. Him. That's probably what's fire going to end up That's happening. Too, that you can't make that mistake, dog. Fire that nigga. You can't make that mistake. You just yeah. can't make that mistake, dog. Fire. He he don't need a job. He don't. I right, go go. Right, he got enough. Uh, what you call it? Fan base. Where he can go do his own thing independent. Yep. So he'll be fine. Fire yeah. him. 
Fire him. That's some nasty stuff right there, man. Hey, um, so folks, let's uh, welcome our guests for this week. Um, been watching his brother for a little bit now. Um, he's got a podcast out right now called The Real Deal with Courtney Harden. You can check it out on all your streaming platforms. Uh, does a great job with the guests that he has on. And uh, reached out to him this week and, you know, thought he could come on. And he, you know, was welcoming to uh, hop on with us. So, uh, Courtney Harden, man, uh, welcome to the sports podcast. Uh, how you doing, man? How's everything? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate it. I'm on the Barbershop Sports Talk podcast. We finally did it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. You know, I'm a big fan of you guys. Um, I love all the things you guys are doing, all the, you know, the content and everything. And uh, I appreciate the invite, man. So I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We see you in the streets as well, bro. So yeah. reciproc reciprocate it. Yeah, definitely. And you know, you know, we do. We we just we watch each other and you know, you have the same some of the same guests and everything, but it's all it's all love, man. I, I really I really appreciate the the invite. I really love your love you guys, uh the podcast and everything. Yeah. And yes, and sir. speaking of and speaking of the same guests too, and, and and shout out to, you know, all the female guests that we've had on. Mm. And I and I and I've noticed that some of the female guests we have on you had on your platform as well. But the thing that I always can admire about your podcast is is that you give women the platform like you you know it seemed like every week you got somebody um you got a woman on from sports that's doing her thing and i feel like you're one of the ones that give the women the platform you know to speak on sports topics and things like that so we we definitely appreciate what you're doing there thanks yeah i, I appreciate that yeah i try to as you said just trying to uplift uh, the the women that that are just doing their thing, whether it's in sports, media, anything like that, and just to give them, a, like I said, just give them a platform and give them their flowers that they deserve. And because uh, I know it's 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 tough for them a yeah. lot, and, yeah. and you know yeah. some of the things that they go through and what what we see what what we see that we don't go through, mm -hmm. and they talk about that too on the podcast. I just want to give them something like a safe space at least, and just to let them know that you know we're here for them. Um, anything they need to help if they want to promote something, they just tell their story, whatever it is. I just try to uplift uh, the women in the sports media uh, space. So that's that's one of the main things I, I try to do with the pod. One of the main things I try to do with the podcast, man. So yeah, for sure. What I find, um, and I, I think I think uh, Trey was second me on this is that uh, I think what we've what I found out in and having so much so many women guests on uh, in recent history is that. Man, they just as sharp, if not sharper, yeah. than us when it comes to talking about sports. And I've had, I, I have, the, I've had this conversation a few times off air about, um, you know, these joints don't really know what they're talking about. And I was like, man, I, I, I would tell you, mm -hmm. uh, based on my history, man, if you sit there and talk to these women, they know just as much, and they wouldn't, they know and they wouldn't go with you and talk that shit with you about with the sports. So, um, so definitely, um, I think it's important to give them a platform to be heard and if you just listen you'll you, you'll you'll hear some good shit yeah and that's what it's about just listening like yeah as yes. you know we put like we give like i said we, we said okay you, you want to be a guest they come on and it's just like just talking amongst like friends almost in a way you know it's, mm -hmm. that's that's what it's about it's like I, I don't care if it's a male female it doesn't matter i mean they, they know they stuff and you know i would never question that either so it's just like we're just conversating i have a question and we're just now we're just conversating like you might have a, a cowboy fan i'm an eagles fan as you know cowboy fan on we're arguing like like what what, mm -hmm. what we do we're just arguing we're just uh, debating but it's, yeah. it's, it's, right. it's, it's it's that respect um you know they they deserve that respect and that's what we that's what we give that's what i try to do so yeah i totally agree with that now yeah. how did you uh link up with bs3 and, and shout out to uh the homie BS3, we so um, you know, we had him on a couple times um, in the past and uh, earlier this year. But I, I noticed that um, you know, with his BS3 network, um, you actually had your podcast on his network for a little yeah. bit while. Are you guys still connected? Oh yeah, yep, still on the still on the BS3 network. And uh, it's funny because I, when I was doing a podcast, I, I had a podcast before a previous one. Yeah. It was called The Takeover, and that's how I started podcast. And I was in like 2015. So I did that for a while. I had a co-host at one point, and uh, then I did that. And I, then I just did it. I did it by myself, and from like for a couple of years. So it's like 2017. But I was always me and Ben linked up before I jumped on his pod on his network. 
So we, uh, I think that was 2019 when I linked up with him. He was starting his network. You know, he was just doing a podcast yeah. by himself and everything. And he said, you know what, I'm going to do a network. So he reached out. After I took a year off, I did the podcast for like four years, three, four years. Took a year off, just got burnt out. And he said, I'm looking to have some, you know, some hosts and, and some podcasts on this new network. Do you want to join? And, you know, I was trying to get back into the get back into it. I was like, okay, this is perfect. I already know Ben, have worked with him, been on his show. And he was on mine for, for a couple of times. And uh, we just linked up from there. He just said, hey, you want to just jump on? And I, so I rebranded it, the real deal. And that was in 2019. And ever since then, I've been on that, on his network and uh, just put out the content from there. So, yeah, so shout out to BS3 and, and, the, and the entire network. But uh, it's a great platform. And uh, that's how that's how we really linked up. So we linked up before mm-hmm. I jumped on, but it was just uh, I think it was just it just fit. It was just a good good yeah, fit. Yeah, and, yeah. and I just kind of linked with with him, and we yeah we've been rocking ever since. For sure. Shout out to my man Ben because I tell him last time I spoke to him, I was like, boy, you doing it, boy? He started <laughs> yeah. talking about Roku and all this other. I said, boy, yeah. you doing it? Mm-hmm. So yeah, shout out to Ben. He's definitely doing big things. All right, man. Let's get straight to the shits, as I like to say. Okay. We got Do some it. sports topics to talk about. I will give you, I'll, I'll give you the easy conversation first <laughs> <Okay>. because uh, <laughs> this is the easy conversation, man. The Eagles, the Philadelphia mm-hmm. Eagles off season, um, uh, clearly uh, 14 and three Super Bowl, uh, what do you call it? Uh, second place, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but going into this year, man, uh, it, it seems like, I, I, it's funny. I watched a quick little video before I got on um about you know the offseason and quote unquote expectations and um Mm -hmm. i mean clearly clearly it would seem that y'all are uh don't have a whole rack of weaknesses and that if it's officially super bowl of bus season yes you put that exactly how i i see it too because as you said they went 14 3 last year got to the super bowl ran through the nfc got through the super bowl Mm -hmm. and they just ran into a you know the best player in the league. They just yeah, ran into right. that Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, right. I, I'm, I can't even. Yeah. Front they made that. one like, mistake in that Super Bowl, though. I think that was the the, the turnover, uh, the Jalen yeah. Hurts turnover. Yeah, the yeah. fumble. Yeah, the fumble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. he was he was great. Man. Oh yeah, he would have been the MVP. He would have yeah. been the MVP. Super Bowl, of yeah. Super Bowl. They still could have gave it to him, but you know it's Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he he was playing on one leg really, and it just he just shows like he's just on a different level than everybody else. But go heading into this season. Yeah, it's it's a high, it's very high expectations. Like last year, going into last season, I didn't have high as real high expectations. The only thing I wanted to do was just to improve and see Jalen Hurts improve. Yeah, and he did that leaps and bounds. The high Roseman gave him all the all the weapons he could have, and he just that that's part of the the progression. But his game himself, he, what Jalen Hurts did, but that was him, you know. And now yeah. he's. What ranked third from on NFL.com, uh, NFL Network ranked him third, the very best player. So that's a huge progression that Jalen Hurst is what he's done. Mm-hmm. So he's definitely a QB one. Uh, but going into this season, you said they, they, they just built. They just kept. They keep building. They built in the draft. They, you know, they built in free agency and trades. So yeah, it is definitely Super Bowl or bust. Yeah, you had some changes on defense this off season mm-hmm. also. Yeah. Um, Garner Johnson goes to the Lions. Right. Um, I, f- I forget the other guy on the on the defensive line that you guys lost to. Uh, who the uh, Niners? The Niners. Hargrave. 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 Yeah. Hargrave. Yeah. 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 Hargrave. yeah. But it, but it, yeah. but it seems like you guys have kind of um, found replacements for them. You know, in hopes that they're gonna you know fill the role in the production and everything. So how are you feeling about the defense going in this year? Losing Hargrave and Garner Johnson, I think I thought that was. Uh... That was that was a big blow because they they were big they were a huge part of the uh, you know getting into the Super Bowl last yeah. season and yeah. uh, but now they replaced them with younger guys you know yeah, they got the, they got did. some ro- they got some rookies and uh, did, uh, Jordan Davis from last season so he played he played he played he he did play a lot in the beginning and then he got hurt and he was trying to work his way back so but he he's he's gonna be trying to fill the role of Hargrave that that hole so and Hargrave had eleven sacks last year so. Right. Uh, that's that's a big hole to fill, but I think Jordan Davis is ready, playing out alongside Fletcher Cox. Brandon Graham is back, uh, so I I really feel like they are going. They they went into the draft like, hey, okay, we got to address this because we are going to lose some guys. 
Uh, they got Jalen Carter, which I didn't think he was going to fall that far. Exactly. Down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so Jeez, that, that was like, uh, and I went to the Eagles draft party and, you know, everybody was like, oh, they're going to get Bijan. I'm like, if Jalen Carter keeps slipping, uh, you know, so he has some off season, you know, off the field issues and things like which that. Which I wouldn't have cared about. I yeah, wish, right. I yeah. wish he would have got down to Pittsburgh, boy. Yeah, right, right. And again, going to a great organization can help. Will help yeah. a player like him. Yep. Pittsburgh is a front office great organization. So Philadelphia great organization. So yeah, it it just fit. So he kept falling, falling. I'm like, Jalen Carr's coming to the Eagles. Like they they're going to get him because he was the. He was built as the most talented player yeah. heading into the draft, one of the most talented players. So, uh, so I think they filled those roles. And you know, the rookies, but they're, they're, he's a rookie. But you know, with those veterans on that defensive line, I think they'll be fine with the on the defensive line. Yeah, I mean, let's be clear. Um, the first five games look like. I mean, you got like the uh, Buccaneers and the Rams and the Commanders. And it's like, it's like, so you're looking like you're going to be like five and no in the first five games. Like, it's, it's different. It, it, I mean, um, and then, you know, Miles Sanders leaves and, and, you know, I get, I know that he had like all these, uh, he had a good year rushing wise yeah. last year, but right. you replace him with a stable of like DeAndre Swift, Rashad Penny. You still got game will and Boston Scott. So now y'all looking like y'all playing this whole game where you got a whole bunch of you got four running backs um, that are good running backs but don't require a whole bunch of money because a the market and b because they don't have this the stock to mm-hmm. even command any money man so I mean to be honest again I mean not to keep riding the point home is Jai y'all Super Bowl <laughs> to lose. Um, and I mean, and it, it'd be good because I know Jason Kelsey is probably playing his last year. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, Kelsey he got begged to come back the last two seasons, and so yeah. and you know he's still playing at a, such a high level. He's I mean, still one of the best. I mean, if one of the best centers, best centers the, in the game in the for sure. Game. Yeah, yeah. And how I got Howie Roseman, man. Like this guy just I, I I always say, how in the world does this guy keep doing it? Like the yeah. Eagles had hardly no cap space, and he figures a way to get these guys to come in. But you said they're not big contracts really and getting swift which was a surprise like when they got penny i was like okay this is good you know, yeah replace miles sanders i i liked miles Sanders. I, i've always liked miles sanders i just don't think the eagles utilized him enough mm. or the right way they 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 gave they got away from the running game a lot but then gainwell started right know, catching a lot like doing it doing well so i think i figured okay we're gonna go into the off season we're gonna go into the season with gainwell i'm, I'm cool with that i was good with that because he was getting more carries in the playoffs and in the yeah. Super Bowl too, so yeah. Yeah. he was like, "I was like, okay, can he handle the workload?" But now they got Swift and Penny. <laughs> I said that since they both can't stay healthy, they make one running back really. Like, mm. <laughs> you know, Penny can like, yeah. be good for eight games, and then Swift might be good for eight games. But you said we got a game on Boston Scott's back too, so yeah, the running the running back. Um, that that room now is very is very talented. Very good, yeah. Very good. Very good. Very Y'all got good. the Patriots to open up the season, mm-hmm. and then the Vikings, and then the teams that Maisha was just talking about with the Bucks, Commanders, and the Rams and stuff. So right. yeah, it's it's definitely possible that Y'all can start the season undefeated. You know, five and zero. You know, going into that Jets game, which I think is Week Six or whatever. So, um, but uh, back to the defense for a second because. Mm-hmm. Um, in this modern day of the NFL where they're throwing the ball a lot and stuff, um, mm-hmm. this defense, you know, set a record for sacks, if I'm not mistaken. They had yeah. like five or six guys with uh, double-digit sacks. Hit 10 or more, yep. yep. Yeah, and, you know, and, and I felt like it got overshadowed because Jalen Hurts was so great, you know, along with the offense, uh, production and everything. But, um, like, where, where, where do you put this defense in, like, the echelon of maybe – some of your previous, you know, past defense, past great defenses. I think it does, especially last season, it's, it's way up there. It's very high because of the, the sacks and the pressure they was able to put on. I mean, they had 62 and a half sacks came from just their front four, four out of those right. 70. So they, they were just, they weren't blitzing much. And Hassan Reddick, I think he had 17 sacks. 17, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So he had 17. Josh Sweat had 11. You know, Brandon Graham, for the first time in his career, he had double digits. He had 11. Um, and, and even um, uh, Fletcher Cox, who, you know, he was he's on the back end of his career. So mm-hmm. he's had a couple yeah. – last couple of seasons, he, he really struggled. But now that he was able to to come back a little bit for what he was. So, he had, I think he had seven or seven and a half sacks. So, 
Uh, like I said, they replaced Hargrave had he had eleven sacks himself. So that's that's going to be where I believe where Jordan Davis comes in, or you know. So I think the defense should be. I think they're they're still going to be as just as good. Uh, they might take a step back. I, I, I'm, the secondary is still a little questionable, even though Bradbury and Slay, you know, all pro corners. Oh, yeah. But it's that back end. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's where I'm concerned. They're they're, they're young on that back end. Uh, so, but hopefully they're going to be able to pressure with that front four and able to still get pressure, so the secondary won't be won't get beat deep uh, so yeah. much. But I think the defense should be a top five defense heading into the season. Yeah, I'm thinking top three. Mm. Um, and and uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, not the you know, I, I I'm objective at this point of the season. So yeah, uh, me too. I'm trying uh, to be. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I mean, look, man, if you if you're telling if you're telling that offense that you know we going to score more than 20 <laughs> you know True. I, I, yeah i think i think the eagles will be just fine i think they'll be just fine i don't want to harp too much on the eagles because i want to <laughs> get to the tough question okay <laughs> this philadelphia sixers all season mm, let's go let's go <laughs> when they oh, ate are, are they are they gonna trade your cousin at some point man like what's going on <laughs> what's, what's going I on i don't know man i think Harden's <laughs> gonna be back i really do like i if they didn't trade them now, I mean, yes, it's still the off season, still super early. early. Yeah, yeah, it's still yeah. early. But the thing is, where does it go? I mean, they they said the Clippers, but do do the, do the Sixers? What you know, who are they going to offer? And they're not going to offer Paul George or Kawhi. So who else are they going to offer? It's going to have to be picks at least. But I, I don't know. I don't know where else Harden would fit. Yeah, it would have to be a three team deal at least. Yeah. I feel he's going to be right back here for one more season. I think they're going to try to run it back. One more year, and they'll probably get to the second round again, and yep. they get bounced out. Yep. Did they trade Tobias Harris already? No, nope. he's still he's there. Still, yep. he's, nah, still he's still there. there. I know they've been trying to get him. I know they've yeah, been trying, trying to get rid of him too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's be clear. Uh, the process. Are we hmm. done talking about this? Uh, is nobody's gonna nobody's gonna try to slide that in? Or we are we? What was what's what's your? It should be done. Like the process okay. is done. Like it's like they they haven't. They haven't improved enough to be still be called the process. Like they, this is the product. This, at this, this point. is the product of the process, right? Yeah. And then Joel Embiid, I mean, top three, five player in the league, MVP of the last MVP. So now there's there's just, there's been a lot of rumors and talk about okay, if he doesn't get past the second round, okay, now is the pressure on him? Is is it him? Is he the yeah. problem? And that's that's what the the you know sport talking has been saying here. Now is it, he hasn't getting hardly any of the blame. Uh, as of this, as of this point, because mm-hmm. he had the MVP year, but if he doesn't get him over the hump, because they they had they should have beat the Celtics last season, like they should have, you know, they had him on the ropes. They yeah, ropes. Up, yeah, up three two, up three two mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter. Jason Tatum was two for fifteen at that. Point. Had a had a garbage game, garbage a garbage game. game six, and yeah. they was up by ten plus. And then the fourth quarter, the last six minutes, Tatum outscores Sixers by himself, and then in, and then game seven. He scores 51. So that was it right there. Mm. And that's like, that's the Sixers. That's been them for the last, since the process, the last four four or five seasons. So it, it's just, I don't know. Now it's, it's, it's going to be, I think, more pressure's on Joel Embiid uh, to to get them over the hump. Uh, but he needs his help. So Harden, he's, he's, he is who he is. Harden is a, is a good regular season player. But when it comes to playoff, when the pressure comes, he just folds, you know, so. And I will reckon to say, that Joel Embiid, as talented as he is, mm-hmm. and I and I guess because there's way more regular season play than than playoff that's yeah. played, yeah. May, that you have to put him in the top five. But he is five C, mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah, he is yeah. the he is the most middest best player in the league <laughs> that, I mean, that could be known to man. I'm like, it's just too much for him. I, what has to happen? Because let me be clear on this. Let me clear my stance. They do not win a championship with Joel Embiid being the main piece. Mm. That's my stance. They need a wing. Mm. They need a, they need a wing. That's going to be like, Hey, give me the ball. I'm going to get the last shot. You said a who? The, a wing. A wing. Oh, a wing. Okay, gotcha, a wing. Gotcha. Yeah. They need they need that kind of guy that could take over a game in the fourth quarter or be able to get the last bucket if you need a last bucket, right? So yeah. who's who's that cat on the Sixers right now? 
Tobias Harris. <laughs> Tobias Harris. He thinks he's like that. I and mean, the way, he's talking, yeah. the way he's talking in the offseason, or I know his dad was was chatting it up saying, yeah, you know, I Tobias Harris needs to be that guy. I'm like, Tobias that. Harris had opportunity to be that guy. No, a long time nah. ago. A long time ago. He's not that guy. Tyrese Maxey, I mean, yes, he could, he could be the guy that can score, but I think the Sixers need to get a Dame. Like, they need to go and get Dame. Mm. That's the piece that they need. I mean, as much as I, I mean, Maxi is a, a really good player. Yeah, you say they got Harden. I say you take whatever it takes to get to get Dame here to Philly, and then he'll be the guy to take the pressure off of Joel Embiid. Right, and you know that can score. Mm-hmm. We've seen Dame time again and again and again hit those clutch shots, and that's the press. That's the guy Joel Embiid always says after they get bounced out. I need a, I need some more help. Okay, well yeah. you go get you just you get a, take whatever it takes to get to get Dame because now they got you know they got Nick Nurse now as coach. Yeah, got rid of Doc. I know Doc, I knew Doc was gonna get. They know he's gonna get fired after yep. they got they got. And he deserved out. it. And he yeah, deserved it. It was it was time. Like he yeah. he, he yeah. just he can't he never adjusts in the playoffs. It's, you know, but Nick Nurse who's won a championship too, mm-hmm. um in Toronto. I mean maybe he's gonna unlock another level to Joel and B. But if they had somebody like a Damian Lillard. That would that would really I think that would put the Sixers in that upper echelon and get them at least to the conference final. Yeah, but Courtney, Sorry. let's be clear. Let's be clear. the The Sixers have problems beyond Doc Rivers, you know, mm-hmm. being the issue. You know, yeah. they got no shooting. You know, we no. we you know me and Maestro we talked about that for about a couple of years now. Like they mm-hmm. have no guards that you know you can hit them in the corner. They can knock down a shot for you. They don't have right. that guy. Yeah, yeah. Really I mean, they got that Niang guy who I guess, but he don't he don't really get uh, he don't mm. really get a whole bunch of yeah he don't really yeah. Like, he don't get getting, a lot of time. He, yeah, he don't he get, get the get looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I, I'll be honest, man. Burn the whole ship down. I yeah. hate to be yeah. Burn it's the coming. whole ship down. It's burn coming, man. I think I think they're down. gonna I think they're gonna run it back one more time. At least try. Yeah, because they're they are a top three in the East. Yes, so, you know when they're healthy. But then Joel B, he got you know he got injured in the Brooklyn series and. Yep. Comes back, comes back game three, I think it was, game yeah. three, three. And he didn't look the same. He just didn't look himself. And it's it's just, it, they have, it seems like it happens every year. So, I, like I said, I think they're going to run it back one more time mm-hmm. with, with Nick Nurse as coach now. And But you're right. The shooting is always – they haven't had a good shooter since, what, J.J. Redick? Yeah. Really? yeah. And, yeah. um, and you, know, you need shooting. You do need shooting. I mean, look at all the past championships of shooting. Denver had shooting. Mm-hmm. Golden State, you know they got shooters. Yep. You know? Milwaukee. Milwaukee, Milwaukee yeah, had them. Had, yeah. They, they had shooters. So you need a guy that – you need guys that can – you know, when, when Joel B gets double team, you can kick it out, who can hit consistently. P.J. Tucker's not that – he's not that guy. He, he can't yeah. he can't get 20 each night, um, yeah. you know. And uh, like I said, Maxi, yeah, nice piece and, and is – is getting is improving, but he's not a consistent knockdown shooter. James Harden's not a consistent knockdown shooter. Mm-hmm. Tobias Harris can be, but right? He's not, you know, he, yeah, you and think, he don't want to be. He, he don't want to be. He, he's right. He don't want to be. <laughs> he's very streaky. But he don't want to shoot. I think if I think if he realized, oh, I can make my money for the next hell five, maybe eight years, mm-hmm. just being a knockdown shooter. He and the gym and right. did that. Mm-hmm. He can do that, but he still think he a slash. He still think he can compete with those. Uh, you know, upper echelon creative shot scores, and that that ain't, I don't think that's his game no more. Like I say, he's been in his league for a brick. Yeah. Um, I think he need to start adjusting his game if he's going to be that guy for the Sixers. Um, but I, but I, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, like I said, burn it down, especially when, uh, and then getting back to Joel and B, considering that his competition is doing everything on his team, setting his shooters up. Scoring, yep. rebounding, like it, like like yeah, it, it's it's a wrap. For it. Like yeah. and, I get it. He will consistent as long as he, he's that tall and that talented and, and and put the numbers up. He'll still get the comparison. You know the comparison. Like he's as good as the Joker. But I mean, I, I think it's clear at this stage of the game that his levels and that Joel Embiid ain't there and might. And I mean, what? How long he been in the league since like uh? He's been in the league about eight, eight nine, years, eight yeah. years, something eight like years, that. Seven about eight years. years. I yeah. mean, maybe, may, maybe he reaching prime season, but I want to say he probably ain't. Yeah, and so he this might is be, the guy. He might be motivated just because he saw the Joker, and I, 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 I think the Joker's better. I, I felt that way over the last couple of seasons. That yeah, the Joker was better for than sure. Him. Right, right. And because the Joker, like you said, he can set, he sets up his teammates. He can pass. He can shoot. He can get on the block and. I know people talk, criticize his defense, but 
he improved that too. So yeah. he's, a, he's a he's a big load. So he just showed like, look, I can average triple double. Uh, Joel Embiid could do just just as much as he can, and I think he's a better defender. But it, there's like you said, there's a different level when Joel. Yeah, out there I think Embiid. I think when it comes to passing and making guys around you better, I right. think that's where. He's not on that level yeah. with right. the Joker. But just to stay on the MB topic for a second, so full disclosure, I'm a diehard Knicks fan. Mm, and okay. my offseason so far in my timelines have been littered with trade proposals, mm-hmm. all crazy stuff that I'm hearing. And one of the interesting ones that I keep hearing about is this idea that the Sixers are going to somehow break up this process thing with Joel Embiid this offseason. Um, me personally, and you know, and I know Maestro doesn't like when I talk about things like this when it comes to trading within your rival division and mm. all that stuff, but I, I, as much as I would like to have Joel Embiid on the Knicks, I just don't see a situation where the Sixers do it. Not with a guy in his prime, anyway. Like, if that guy was beyond his prime and can only play 20 minutes a night, then yeah, I could see him doing it. But for a guy on this level, I I just don't see it happening. So I guess my question for you is that how much do you take the MB trade talks, the rumors and, you know, whatever, like other information you might have, you know, on the inside and all that? I think it's, I I think there's a little bit of, of, there's something there with the trade. I don't know about to the Knicks. I know the Knicks are, as you know, probably Knicks, they're getting everybody. They, yeah. it's every year. It's every like, offseason, it's every always, off season, how getting, can we get Dame? How can we get, yeah, yeah. you right, know, right. yeah, how can we get Giannis? It's, it's always that. <laughs> right, right. When somebody's up for, you know, that, you know, that level, it's always something there. But, you know, with Embiid, it's, it's okay, who do you, the Sixers are going to want a, like a, a ton for Joel Embiid, they're not yeah. gonna just trade him for nothing, you know. Right, just like right. look at what they, they want for a Harden. They want all these picks and an all star caliber player. So Joel Embiid They're not getting that. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get Rudy Gobert type of deal where it's like five first round picks and then all yeah. the end you're gonna get a couple all star players. you got all star players and I don't know if the Knicks are willing to give up the farm just even for even for Joel Embiid too, because they would Randall. I don't doubt it. Like that's the that kind. Well, if you remember the Donovan Mitchell stuff last off season, mm-hmm. that was a big topic, and yeah. you know we saw how that kind of played out. I mean, we met him in the playoffs and we took him out. So you know the whole narrative about it's a failure if the Knicks don't beat Cleveland. That you know that kind of got thrown out the window. Yeah. But I feel like the trade market since the Rudy Gobert trade happened, I feel like it's kind of come back a little bit. Maestro, yeah. what mm. would Bradley Beal go for again? What did he go to Phoenix for? Uh, oh, you put me on the spot, bro, mm. and I do not remember. I, uh, I mean, it it wasn't it wasn't quite it wasn't none of that, right? Was, so Bradley right. Beal wasn't like no crazy, yeah, wasn't no it was like three crazy, picks, three yeah, picks yeah, and, and, and uh, Shemet, Shemet, yeah, 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 Shemet, yeah, yeah, right, Shemet. right. So you had that trade go with, you know, that wasn't a big compensation. And then Chris Mm -hmm. Paul, you know, went to the Warriors for not that much compensation. And so, um, so I, I I think the Knicks are monitoring that and they're kind of saying to themselves, well, I mean, if these guys are going for pennies on the dollar, like, you know, like I, like I saw Stephen A a few weeks ago, but those was contract situations though, trade to cut you off. uh Those was, you know, uh, Bill had a big ass contract. Yeah, you know right, what I'm saying. Right. So yeah. I mean, let's be clear. The Wizards, uh, as much as they say, you know, like he said, he want to stay, and they say maybe we could work something out. Yeah, they got a when 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 new management came in, it was very clear. Mm-hmm. Get this money off our damn books. Yeah, yeah. You know right. what I'm saying. So because I mean, you know, a week later, Porzingis went. Yep. Um, I mean, and even though they bought in pool for a lot of money, he's 25 years old. So, right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's a difference. I mean, so that's kind of a different situation. I think with uh, the Knicks, I think with the Knicks, and, and let's be clear, Embiid is not going to the Knicks, and I know you don't want him, but it ain't happening even if you did. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. I don't think, I don't see it happening. Yeah, and, and not, even, not, let's be clear. Even I'm not even dreaming it, for it. it. <laughs> I'm yeah, not even right. dreaming for it. So I, I think it would be a little different situation. I mean, you got, again, you got a guy who's the MVP of the league. Uh, yeah. 
uh, for better or for worse. I mean, that's just a whole different market, a whole different conversation. Yeah. Even yeah. in the Donovan Mitchell situation, Donovan Mitchell is one of them. You know what I'm saying? Bradley Bill uh, had a, a stretch when he was playing like one of them. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't never considered like one of them. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's a different situation. Yeah. But even like with the Dame situation too. So, um, also like I was like I was saying before you had cut in. So when Stephen A was making the presentation of Dame coming to New York, this dude's talking about we got first round picks, we got players, we got da 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 da. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And look, I get Dame is one of them dudes, right? I I I get Dame is one of them dudes, but. He's 33 years old. He's he's an older player. Um, and don't get me wrong, I would take him. But if I'm the Knicks looking at it, I'm like, wait a minute. We just saw Bradley Beal. And I, and I get Brad Beal is not Dame. But both of those guys are, you know, in their 30s. Why should we have to give up our compensation for Dame, who's going to be, I think, 34 later this year? And how much does he really have left? I mean, he just started, you know, with some of these injuries over the past couple of years. You know, who knows what kind of sign that is? Could he be breaking down? Um, who, who knows? Is he a great shooter still? Yeah, he's, he's still a great shooter. But if I'm the Knicks, I, I kind of look at the Dame situation and say, eh, I, I think we'll hold on to, you know, our assets. And then we're just going to wait for... A guy like let's just I'm gonna throw a name out there, uh, Luca. Like if Luca doesn't like what Dallas is doing, mm -hmm. and you know in a year or two, mm -hmm. then that's the kind of player that I'm willing to give up five first or basically you know, you, you, you want to do this for a younger player and I want to yeah, yeah I want to give up yeah I want to give up three players five picks for a player like that like Luca right. or if Giannis right. decides you know what. I want to chip in Milwaukee. I want to try something different. That's the that's the kind of guy that I'm willing to give up the farm for. Right, and then, and with yeah, Dame, with Dame, it's like a two or three year window or two year window. That's why right. I said if the Sixers are going to jump on it, you jump on it now. Right, right. 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 Do whatever, whatever it takes for the Knicks. I mean, Brunson just had a a great year, like a tremendous year. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm sure we all saw that coming because what he did in Dallas. Dallas, I think they they're they're like, man, we should have never got rid of this guy. Oh, that, they're shaking tried. in their head in their yeah, man. <laughs> we should we should have kept him with Luca. Yeah, like, that mm -hmm. was the combination. You go get Kyrie, who who knows he's gonna be there, he's gonna not gonna work, he's not gonna come to work. This is one of those mm. things with Kyrie. He might go off on some sabbatical somewhere. You never know with Kyrie, <laughs> but you want to keep Brunson, like Brunson. You, you got that. I mean, you just build around him, and you keep building around him. I, you know, I I, I like R.J. Barrett. Like that's that's. The Knicks have pieces. It's just they just have to. I just think they just need to just keep it keep it going for a couple of years. Yeah, they need this. They need shooting, yeah. and 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 and, and, I, and I'm yeah. comfortable with them addressing the shooting this off season. Like they got uh, Divincenzo from yeah. uh, what was that from Milwaukee? I think he was. Oh no, Golden State. Golden State yeah, from, yeah. from Golden State. Yeah, I, I I like Divincenzo as a guy that can you know spot up shoot. You know, yeah. hit him in the corner. He can knock down shots. Like I, I, I like that pickup. And if there's, and if they do nothing else this off season with the team they got going forward, I'm, I'm cool with going forward with it. Yeah, the Knicks are gonna be fine because Divincenzo is a typical guy type of guy. Uh, you know, he can play D. Uh, yeah. I, I'm surprised the Warriors let him go. You know, I know they got Chris Paul, but they, mm. you know, they could have kept a Divin yeah. Divincenzo because he helped them a lot, a lot knock down shooter. And he can play some defense, and you yeah. know, and plus he's playing, he's back playing with you know, with Brunson too. So now you know that Villanova connection with Brunson, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Villanova, Villanova yeah. Knicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And Josh right. Hart's there too. So. And Josh Hart, yeah. So the Knicks, it's crazy. Have, those are those are the type of guys that Thibodeau always likes. Those those hard nosed defensive guys, yeah. um, and that's what the Knicks. I think like I said they, they just give them. They just need the Knicks. Just need to stay pat where they are and. They're in, in the East, is East and so develop. wide open. Yeah, and they develop. And develop. Yeah, they're young. Yep. They're, they're young. young. They're young. Mm -hmm. And and kind of going back to the Donovan Mitchell thing, um, there's this story out there that he told the Cavs, I'm not resigning with you guys. So mm. if you guys do something with me before my deal ends, then you got to do what you got to do. Um, it, 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 to me, to me, he wants to be in New York. 
that that's what it sounds like to me because he's from the area. His dad works for the Mets, I think, and I, I think he kind of sees himself as a Nick. It's just I I think they you know with the whole Danny H thing, I think Danny H was just trying to you know beat guys in the head. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Okay. So if I could get Donovan Mitchell for free. Hey, hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. There ain't no such thing as free, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, free agency. Free is he going to tap? Yeah, he going to tap them pockets, that's for sure. Yes. Yeah, no, that, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All uh, right, Courtney, man, this is the uh, this is the favorite segment, the fan favorite. Okay. Uh, uh, this, it, 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 it's, a, it's a two-parter. I want you to uh, let people know specifically where they can DM you at. Not me, not Trey. <laughs> let the people know where they can DM you. All right. You can DM me, you know, slide in my DMs. <laughs> they say you can DM me on Twitter, uh, at Courtney110979, uh, Instagram, CJ Harden underscore 79. Had to do that underscore. Cause the page got hacked. My red, my original page got hacked, so mm-hmm. had to had to start mm-hmm. that over. So you have that, and I'm on Facebook as well, Courtney Harden. And I always say, if you want to hit up the show, Google the Real Deal with Courtney Harden. It has all the episodes on there because there's too many platforms. It's on Spotify, Google Play. It's on it's on all the social the, yep. the, the, the socials and everything. So yep, that's where you can find. Okay, it. Okay, so here's the second part. Okay, I want you to give me. The top five players in the NFC East, and I want to give it to you with a preface because the majority of the people that I have to deal with on a day to day (laughs) and not in the social media are Commanders fans. Mm. (laughs) And you are clearly a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Yes. Um, I want you to, uh, I get constant calls, conversations, walking around in my day of life. Who the fuck is this nigga y'all got on this show? (laughs) He don't know nothing about sports. I don't know why y'all keep bringing these people on this show that don't know what they talking about. He ain't say such and such. He ain't do such and such. She Mm. ain't say this. Mm. And, 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 And I, me and Trey no longer want the burden of answering, <laughs> hey man, that's his list. Yeah. I, right. get this yeah, from, I get this from I get this from family too, bro. That's this man's <laughs> list. That's that woman's <laughs> list, man. What do you want right. me to say? Right. Um. So that so everybody knows where they can find you, Courtney. Mm-hmm. I want you to give us the top five players in the NFC East right now. Well, I'll say this before. There's no commanders on this top five list, so. Oh my <laughs> oh. god! So, so they at me all they want. There is no commanders on this list. But once you hear the list, you'll know like, okay, this is this is the list. So, all right, top five no, in no order. Mm-hmm. No order. So, no order. Okay. Yep. Jalen Hurts. Yep. Yep. Michael Parsons. Got yep. him. Yep. Sa- Saquon Barkley. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Um. Let's see. This, I'm having it. Okay, so I'll go AJ Brown. Yep. Okay. Yep. And the fifth. See, this is tough because it's, it's gonna. It's, it's two. It's two Dallas Cowboys. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Dak Prescott. I'll say he's fifth. Dak Prescott over Terry McLaurin. Yeah, because that because you had uh, Courtney. Ooh. The first four. The first four names were in my top five. And mm-hmm. my show just named my fifth guy, Terry McLaurin, Scary Terry. Oh, yeah. Now, it's your list, though. I'm not going right. I'm not going to try to convince you. <laughs> I'll stick with Dak. I'll stick with Dak. I'll okay. just, just because, okay. yeah, Terry McLaurin, yeah, underrated, um, good, real good receiver. He he just would be right outside that top five. But okay. I think when you if you, if you list, like, top quarterbacks, top receivers, where does Terry McLaurin end up? He's in the, what, 10, 15 range probably for receivers, you would say? Yeah, um, I put him a little higher yeah. than 10. A little I, higher? I, I put him a little higher. I put okay. him at 8. I put him at 8. Okay. So, and then okay. I say if I Dak, haven't done my wide receiver ranking. So, uh, yeah. And then Dak, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Dak, but top 10 QB. So, I guess I guess they can go either way, but I'm going to stick with Dak. I'll stick with Dak as the fifth. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie though. I mean, there's some other names. Like, if you just kind of throw out honorable mentions and stuff, mm-hmm. um, I'm looking at a guy like uh, Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey who's was kind yeah. of have done it, you know, for a long time mm-hmm. at the position, you know, for the same team. Okay. Um, a guy like Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson, same, yep, they were on- same, you know, yep. 
same yeah. position, same team for a long time. Um, they, they, I mean, there's there's quite a few guys that um, I mean you could arguably pick um, yeah. from from and, this. Position. And Kelsey was I mean, Kelsey was say top ten. Kelsey was fifth. He was he was. Yeah, on I can that, see Kelsey. He was I on that fifth, Kelsey. and I'm like, should I? Could I put him? Should I? But people were like, oh, this is an all Eagles. So I was like, nah, let me just. I'll back off a little because I mean Trayvon Diggs could have been on that list. Uh, there's there's a few there's a few guys that could have really been on the list. Zach Martin from the Cowboys, almost a lineman. He was, mm-hmm. he was up there. So yeah, but I'm I think I'm gonna stick with Dak as the fifth best oh, in the okay. in the NFC. Well, I'm I will say for sake of not having a debate at my nine to five, I am so glad that you did not put Trayvon Diggs. No, I would have put top five. I would have never. <laughs> man, when I tell you that the arguments and fights that would have been in my nine to five behind Trayvon Diggs <laughs> on this podcast top five, because I got I got Commanders fans and Cowboys fans in the mm. same office. When I tell you that the the fights that would have been going on. <laughs> would have been epic, but I wouldn't have had the energy for it tomorrow morning. Well, yeah, we right. already upset the Commanders fans. I mean, Courtney just kind of, you know, took the yeah. first shot anyway. So yeah, I took the I took the first <laughs> shot. It's football season. That's, man. that's for sure. Shot. Yeah, that's for sure. No that's doubt. For sure. No doubt. No right. doubt. Courtney Hardin, man, we pre- we appreciate you, bro. Uh, just go ahead one more time before we let you go. Go ahead and plug your show. Let everybody know where they can find you. Yes, the the real deal with Courtney Harden. Like I said, you can find it on all. All podcast platforms, all social platforms, bs3network.com. Uh, it's also on the Roku channel, BS3 Network. Uh, just download the Roku channel, BS3 Network, or BS, bs3tvlive.com. You can find all the shows there. Uh, yeah, then like I said, CJ Harden set underscore 79 on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Courtney110979, and uh, Facebook. Yeah, so hit, hit me up. And I got to get you guys on the show too, man. I definitely we got to do something before the, before the season starts, so I'll put y'all on the hot seat next time. So uh, we no doubt, I'll definitely return the favor. But I, I, this was fun. I really appreciate it. Oh, no doubt, no doubt, Courtney. And actually, man, I'm I'm, I'm sorry you had to yes, uh, yes, you know uh, kind of list your social media because I did have one last uh, oh, yeah, question yeah, yeah. for you. Um, yeah. The toughest guest that you had to book on your podcast was who? Ooh, the toughest guest. Yeah, that's a tough one because I've had so many people, you know, going back and forth with, and she's a good friend too, um, Mirren Fader. She's uh, the writer that did the Giannis book. Oh, um, okay. She, um, she, she was one of my first, she was one of my first guests that was on the, that was on the show years ago. Right. So we, we de- developed a friendship and a connection and, but it's been hard to get her back on. She's been on a couple of times. But I've been trying to get her on after. She's been super busy. She works. She works for the Ringer too. Right. So she uh, and she writes a lot of you know a lot of features and stuff like that. But I, I'm trying to get her back on, and it's 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 been tough. So the last time I had her on was in 2021 when the when the book came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've been trying to get her get her back on since then. And I'm always put. I'm always up hitting her up on like every few months. Like, hey, you ready to get back on for like the fourth time, third, fourth time? She's like, yeah, yeah. And then you know something happens. But yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah. shout out to. Out of it. She's, sure. she's, she was tough. I mean, I, she might be not be the toughest, but that's the one first. That's one of the first ones. To, first bit of Ken Yeah, yep. come on yep. in my head. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. For no sure. doubt. For sure. All right, man. Hey, man. We appreciate you, man. We'll see you in the internet streets. Yes. Be safe yes. out here, man. And and we look forward to coming on to your show when, when, when we line up. Yeah, we'll line it up. Like I said, this was, I, I love this show. I love being on. And like I said, if Commander fans want to come at me, they got the social. So, <laughs> Commanders, Giants, E. Uh, you know, Cowboy fans especially, they they can always hit on hit up on the show. I'm I'm always ready. So, but yeah, All I right. appreciate it, y'all. All right, Courtney, we we All appreciate right, it, man. Peace. Uh, y'all stay up. All right, that's uh, that's what's up, uh, Courtney Harden, right here uh, from the Real Deal podcast with Courtney Harden. You can check his podcast out on all the streaming platforms. Uh, does some excellent work. Um, interviews a lot of women in sports media and things like that, and always you know looking to uplift the women in the industry. So, you know, that's the one thing I appreciate about his platform. Um, For sure. And Commander's News, while we were talking about the NFC East. Yeah. Um, Ron Rivera, man, is, uh, I guess Ron Rivera was asked about uh, Eric Bieniemy recently mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because players are out here talking about Eric Bieniemy is too intense 
is how it was described in something I read today that he was being he he's way too intense. Mm -hmm. He cussing people out. Yep. Tyreek Hill got online, got on Twitter, and can't do his defense. Um, it's people coming on, you know, coming to defense of Arab enemy. Like, look, y'all been trash for a long time. Mm -hmm. Let him come in here and do his thing. Yep. Toughen up those types of situations. It's just, it's just for me. It's the reason why I said it on another show. The Commanders should have been in Hard Knocks this year, not the Jets, and that nobody else. It should have been the Commanders. <laughs> Your thoughts? So. I think the criticism here for me is, is that Coach Rivera had to let this get out to the media because someone asked him at the presser, you know, how's, you know, how's things going with the offense and stuff. And he kind of put it out there that some of the guys have been coming to him about Eric Bieniemy. And to me, you kind of keep those things kind of in-house, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I kind of hate this for Eric Bieniemy because there's already that stigma out there that he's not a viable head coach and you know we went through it yeah. we went through it for so many you don't years know what he's doing where, yeah. yeah yeah right we went through it for so many yeah. years talking about he deserves a job and then people are you know bringing up his past into light and stuff and so but look i mean if you watched last season with him in kansas city and you watched the sideline when him and mahomes you know going back and forth at it I mean, you, you should kind of already know that that's the Recording intensity stopped. that you're going to get. And so, um, look like Maestro just kind of left there. Um, but, um, Recording yeah, but, that, in progress. but, but that's my thing. That's, that's kind of my thing here with, um, with what the commanders got going on here is, is that Ron Rivera, who's kind of the last piece to this, you know, Dan Snyder, uh, era, if, if you will, and, and maybe mm -hmm. Jason Wright is a part of that also, although I would like for him to stay, but I can understand if they want to get rid of him too. Um, it, it, it might be time for Josh Harris and Magic Johnson mm -hmm. to just be like, you know what, this is the last piece of the original regime. Maybe we need to get our own guys and then we can kind of get a guy that can, you know, be a true leader. And when things right. get, you know, when things get tight, you know, on the inside, let it stay inside. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that kind of thing, like, to me, I didn't have to hear about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, let that stuff stay in-house because I can guarantee you, if not every offensive coordinator, most offensive coordinators are going to be on your ass about dropping a ball or running a route the wrong way, you know? Well, things things like that. So Yeah, I would hope that, that somebody sat Ron Rivera down and said, Hey, you gotta you gotta stop being so messy in these press conferences. He's got a history of this, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yep. Yeah, so I would hope that somebody sat him down and said, Hey, you gotta relax. Because it's also it's also realistic this the thing that Ron Rivera is on a hot seat this year. Mm-hmm. And rightfully so. Realistic the thing. I don't know what he said. I heard any rumblings of that, but that's realistic to think that to be honest with uh uh this year with you know new ownership coming in. Um that's real to believe. So I would hope that uh that somebody said to him, Hey Chuck. Ooh, Maestro, you think you got a a rough internet connection there. You you might be going yeah, out Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you might be but you can, can you hear me now. Say, yeah I, I can, can hear, hear me you. now. I can hear you. I, I I can hear you. Um, you you can hear me yeah, though, I, right? Nah, that's, it's it's telling me that. Yeah, it's telling me that. I, it, it's yeah, telling so you. Oh, okay, but it's, it's telling, telling you. Just told me that. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah. well. Um, but yeah, man, Ron Rivera, you got chill, bro. Yeah, nah, I agree. I, I I totally agree with that. And 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 in, in relation to the Commanders, um, a, a a big shout out to everybody that attended the Beyonce concert over the weekend. I think there was two shows at the uh, FedEx Field Saturday and Sunday. Um a lot of folks, you know, from the area went. Um some of my, my cousins went to the show. Um the the one thing that I I was paying attention to while the show was going on was that uh FedEx Field was trending. Um I think it was Sunday night. FedEx Field was trending. And I'm like, okay, let's let's see what's going on here. And so I get the sense that some out-of-towners 
um, went to the Beyonce concert at FedEx Field. Um, and I, I think um, I, I, I kind of get a sense of that because, uh, shout out to Rita, the NFL chick, but the reason she didn't go to this particular concert because it's not at Raven Stadium. And I remember the last uh, Beyonce concert that she had at the Raven Stadium. She went to Toronto to go to that particular show, right? So um, folks were complaining about FedEx Field. Like that was kind of like the like the hot button topic Sunday night was just how bad FedEx yeah. Field was as far as like navigating through it, the seats, you know, all the things we talk about, you know, when it kind of comes to that stadium and all that. So um, I, I'll, I'll just say this about whoever, you know, schedules the city dates and the tours and stuff like that. Um, I don't know why you skipped over Raven Stadium. Because when y'all was there years ago, people said that was the best stadium experience in the state. So I, I don't know what happened. I don't know why the Raven Stadium didn't get this stop. Um, but the next time you do it, next time you do the Renaissance Tour, you, you, you got to put M&T Bank Stadium on the list. That That's all I'll say to that. Yeah, um, don't worry. RFK will be will hopefully be together soon. <laughs> By the next time she put out another album and do a tour like that, hopefully. Well, we'll, we'll see. Our... We'll see. Is is that a is that a go yet, or they they say still no, talking? No, no, no. Just wishful thinking. Mm-hmm. Well, you know how I feel about that. They they need to put it right back where you know where it all started. That's why I said RFK. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I I got one more thing, and um, I know we were we were talking about the Colin Coward thing before uh, Courtney came on. Um, so have you heard this thing that's been going on with the Orioles over the, um, I guess mm -hmm. over the course of 24 yep. hours? Kevin Brown suspended. Kevin yes. Brown being suspended yep. for, uh, essentially reading, reading off of, or reading off of a graphic that, uh, the, that the Orioles play bad, uh, against the Rays in the past. Um, even though this year it seems the least that they could do was split with the Rays this year. So it wasn't like he uh, yes. was saying that this, yeah. So it wasn't like he was saying that this is a bad team or that, you know, like he was literally just reading off the facts and apparently nothing has been released that it was anything else besides his criticism of the Orioles in the past. Um, I, I, I want to believe mm -hmm. that the that there's something else that hasn't been reported. That's what I want to believe. I want to believe the same thing too, right? Because I mean, there's there's just no way that um, you can suspend a guy um, for doing his job, right? Yeah. Like that. I mean, and I I kind of took it as, and you know, I watched the clip, and sometimes when you a good team and the Orioles are good this year, they got they're the best record in in the American League, second yeah. best overall. Yeah. Um, you kind of got to tell the tale of the tape, right? So this is how the Orioles got here. We were some trash, and this is how we kind of built it back up to being a competitive team that could be able to compete with the Tampas of the world. Um, my Yankees, who've been, you know, struggling lately. Uh, the Red Sox, you know, that whole division, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and so Kevin Brown, and I don't pretend to know Kevin Brown or any sort, you know, like I don't know if he, you know, did something that's maybe behind closed doors that he shouldn't have done. But I believe that that's it. Something, something tells me that it was. Um, now, there's been several articles that have come out. Um, I know there was the awful announcing article that came out that kind of first broke the story a little bit. Um, and then an, and an article from The Athletic, who was written by a female that used to actually cover the Orioles um, some years ago for, I think it's MLB.com. Um I heard her on the radio this morning and she went, she went in on the organization. I mean, she basically kind of confirmed that, Hey, this is why Kevin Brown got suspended because of what he said on that broadcast, you know, when they had that graphic up about how bad they were against Tampa all these years. And so, mm -hmm. and, and, and I guess my other reaction to it too is, is this, and it, it kind of goes to back to the, uh, Colin Cowherd topic we talked about. So you have a graphics department, right? And I'm, I'm just going to assume that when you get ready to do a broadcast, that 
you as the on-air personality or the play-by-play -play guy or whatever, y'all have a meeting about this stuff and you know ahead of time, okay, these are the graphics that are going to come up. These are the topics that we're going to talk about. So when these graphics come up, you go ahead and you kind of summarize however which way you want to summarize it. And right. so um, I'm just curious as to what happened with the production team, the people that do the graphics. Did they get suspended? Because he was bas he was basically he was summarizing the story of what the graphics was detailing. Right, so, right, and if the and if right. the and if the Angeloses didn't want that to be broadcasted, then you kind of gotta not just look at Kevin Brown. You gotta look at the graphics people as well. Um, this just kind of reminds me, man. You know, I, I, I'm a Knicks fan, and sometimes when you got a team, whether they're good or bad. Sometimes, like, the, the off-the-court or the off-the-field noise is more louder than what's on the field or on the court. And I just kind of go back to when Oakley was ushered out Madison Square Garden. That became a big story more than the product on the court. Uh, Spike not being able to enter Madison Square Garden on, on one side of the building. That became a big story versus, you know, the product on the court. You know, this is kind of the same thing here with the Orioles. Like, you got bad management. You got a team that's the second best in the league um, that's getting national love now. Like, everybody's been talking about it. Like, um, like the Yankees announcers was, you know, giving them all the smoke. The Mets announcers was giving them all the smoke last night on their broadcast. It's like, it's like y'all. Yeah. Like, y'all got, got a good thing going, and y'all messing this up. Over some petty stuff. This is this is petty. Like this is you know, the, or I should say, the way it's perceived, the way that you guys have addressed this is petty, and it's being talked about more than the product on the field. And and I think it's a it's very disappointing. And you know, again, I'm a Yankees fan, so this is the rival. But you know, when I look at people that I know that root for the team, I can kind of sympathize with them because I root for a team who's had a history of bad ownership and has had a history of stories that have nothing to do with the team. So it, 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 it's rough, man. But I'm with you. I, I, I kind of feel like there's something more to this than just him telling the truth about the team's past. Yeah, um, I, Angelos, Angelos family, is that who it is? The, John the, Angelos? The Angelos family. Yeah, we need to hear from y'all. I, I, like I said, I, I refuse that, that. That's that's ignorance. I mean, Colin Cowherd made them mis made a mistake. This man didn't make a mistake, so this is different for me. Mm -hmm. So I need to hear from the Andrew. I, I I refuse to believe that that's what got him suspended indefinitely. Yeah, and and they've had a history of letting go of Hall of Fame John broadcasters Miller, in the John past Miller and stuff. Some, yeah, yeah, John Miller, and then the guy before that. Like they they've had a history of of doing this stuff and it's like guys why y'all why y'all doing this to y'all legends like y'all you know it's it, it's you know it's one of those things it's like the team is bad for so long and so you kind of stay maybe quiet maybe they just needed some negative balance maybe they just needed some negative balance they're doing so good on the field they just needed something to balance so look at me too. look at me <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I, I don't know man I, I, I don't know because I, I mean I'll be honest with you I don't you know and you know I don't watch a whole rack of baseball but yep. I, I I knew the Orioles were doing good but mm -hmm. I didn't realize they were doing that good. I didn't realize they were the second best team in the league. So yeah. maybe they were doing this to put eyes on the league. I don't, I, on, on the team, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, they've been had eyes. Like, I, they played the Yankees um, the, the weekend I was in New York. Um, they was on Sunday Night Baseball. National mm -hmm. audience. You mm -hmm. know, they, they got the spotlight. They was on Fox the, the other weekend. National yeah. audience against the Yankees. They, they yeah. get in the spotlight. Um, you know, for the good reasons up until this point, um, I, I just think it's, I just think it's an ownership group that's just looking for attention. And, um, you know, if, if you, if you talk to some people around here, you know, cause I, I, I work with some, you know, I work with some Oreo fans. Um, there is a story about, um, them possibly moving the team, which I don't think would, would ever happen. But, um, one of the sons, uh, John, I think is. I guess he's got a girlfriend that's like a country music singer that lives in Nashville. Okay. And, um, you know, Nashville is one of those 
up and coming cities that's looking to get, you know, more sports teams, you know, into their city and stuff. And that was one of the like topics about, you know, Nashville getting a baseball team and people around here are a little bit concerned with that on top of the fact that they haven't agreed to a new lease for Camden Yards, Camden Yards. which I think they're which I think is up in like 4 months. So oh, wow. so you got a team that could possibly win the chip and you in a place that you only got four months left in with no, you know, with no deal in sight. Like interesting. That that's that's some wild stuff right there. So um yeah, man, hey, y'all, man. Y'all, y'all gotta do better, man. <laughs> yeah, we need to hear what's going on with y'all. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. Um I'm I'm good, man. I don't know if you got anything else. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see you. I see you reading the reading the screen and stuff. So I'm like, I right, yeah, it's it's going bad. But uh, let me let me give a quick shout out here. Um, the homie P Shark uh, was up in the uh, YouTube live chat earlier. And and, and speaking of that too, um, programming note. Uh, this Sunday. Um, so let's be real. Media, which is also um, ran by P Shark. I'm going to be on the podcast Sunday afternoon. Um, I'll let you guys know what time it is, but he's doing a AFC North roundtable. So we're going to be, you know, doing some stuff like that. I don't know if he reached out to you, Maestro, or not, but um, at least on the Steelers front. Uh, no. Uh, well, let me check my DM, but no. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to be doing P-Sharks podcast, uh, Let's Be Real Media. Uh, this Sunday, so, uh, you know, make sure y'all check that out, um, shout out to everybody else in the chats, uh, appreciate y'all tuning in, supporting the show, um, big shout out to the homie Courtney Harden for coming through, um, you know, he's doing some big things with his podcast as well, um, folks continue to follow us on our social media platforms, we got the Facebook page, we got the YouTube channel, we also got Instagram, at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast, you can follow us on Twitter, or I guess they call it Twitter X now. Um, at Barbershop S P O R two is the handle. Uh, if you got questions, you want to email us or comments, uh, Barbershop Sports Talk One at gmail.com is where you can reach us at. And uh, drop us a review, um, whether you're listening to any of these streaming platforms Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Apple. Um, let us know what you think about the show. It goes a long way. And, bro, um, this was another great week. Uh, another great one in the books here. So I can't wait to do it again next week, homie. Yeah, your, your yep. internet's bad. <laughs> hey, folks, love, peace, and happiness. And as always, folks, mind your damn business. Peace. Recording oh, stop. yeah, we got em. Trey Frazier and Maestro Styles, you know we got one. Right back like we left some We don't duck smoke, we want all of it So line them up, Trey shot with the blade You know we sizing it up I'm quick to catch the fade, you know Styles making the cut Cause we coming out clean every time that we showing up It's gonna be called The Barbershop